Hello and welcome back to another sketchbook time video. This one is going to be slightly different because it's a little bit shorter than the others, first of all. Uh, the other ones were turning out to be very long videos at about 30 minutes or so each and our internet is really really bad and so I have to upload them overnight they sometimes take about eight or nine hours to upload and that's just at 720 instead of 1080 um, I want to record this one in slightly higher quality because I'll be working on a more detailed um, and intricate drawing so it's like a proper drawing rather than a sketch um, so yeah I decided that I would make this one a little bit shorter so I could make the quality higher and also as you can tell I'm doing a voiceover um, the reason for that is um, also because I was working on this more detailed piece and it just meant that I didn't have to think about drawing and talking at the same time which I'm actually finding surprisingly difficult. I noticed it when I was working on the, um, what I called the kind of wonky houses. And I was drawing the buildings from Map Crunch in, I think it was the last sketchbook time, to actually work on something that wasn't just color swatching or playing with marks and texture, and actually try to create something recognizable and talk at the same time was really, really difficult. So I thought I'd give myself a break on this one and I would just concentrate on the filming and I can chat to you via the voiceover. I think one of the first things we should address before we go any further is the fact that my nail polish looks so bad in, in this video. Um, I was limited with my time that day and seeing as I haven't put anything up on YouTube for a couple of weeks now, I just wanted to get in the studio and film something for you. And I was really inspired to work on this piece. And I realised my nails looked terrible and it was a choice of either sitting there for a good hour or so while I painted my nails and they dried or just getting in the studio and working. So um, I decided to do that <laughs> so I could actually get a video out for you. Um, and also, you know, when you're inspired to work on something, you just want to work on it. Um, so that's what I did. So we're just going to have to ignore the chipped nail polish. Um, yeah, I should talk a little bit about what I'm doing in this video. So I was working um, via an image that I found online. It wasn't a map crunch image. It was actually um, a photo of the, I think it was the Yorkshire Dales, um, but I adapted it. So I kind of took the reality and also used my imagination, which is my favorite way of working. Um, so I sort of combined the two. So the view didn't look exactly like this, but it was the starting point for this piece. noticed this while watching it back how much more confident I am now with the colored pencils because I've only been using them I think probably just over a month maybe a month and a half I don't know the time goes by so quickly it's hard to tell <laughs> but a few weeks anyway and uh, yeah at the beginning I was just very unsure if you've seen my previous videos you will have noticed that um, I posted a studio vlog where I showed you all of the pieces I was working on and on each one of them something hadn't gone particularly well or I couldn't get the look I was aiming for and now with just a few weeks of practice and I haven't been using them exclusively I've been painting too so um, my time with them has probably only amounted to perhaps I don't know in total maybe three or four days but I feel already now that I'm getting so much more 
um, sure about what I'm doing with them and I can layer them so much better. One thing that's quite interesting that I have noticed about um, working with coloured pencils uh, with regard to the layering aspect of them is that when I started I was using them a bit too precisely and too much like I would use paint so I would lay down the first layer with like this really heavy layer of pencil and then when I go to work over it of course because it's so thick and waxy and dense the pencil on top doesn't really have much of an effect and what I actually wanted to do was to layer these so you could see the different colors so say you've got two slightly different colors of pencil you want to see beneath the top layer to the layer below so what I'm actually doing now is I'm layering much more loosely so it's much more of a scribbly kind of effect um, so it makes these wonderful textures. So you're just scribbling at different angles. I hope this is making sense, by the way. Um, and it's much lighter and much looser. So then when I get the other pencil and I go over the top, I'm doing the same thing again. And it's actually laying on top of the one below because it isn't so thick and waxy. And so it took me a little while to realise this. I mean, sometimes you want a really dense, pigmented... Um, area of pencil um, if you don't want to go over the top with another color that's fine but if you do it has to be much lighter and much looser and that's something that I've learned just through trial and error really and also kind of watching other people and seeing what they do because whenever you learn a new material um, or new medium it's you're always going to come across problems with it. Um, it's very unlikely that you will be able to work with it perfectly straight away. I'm really excited by this actually because I feel like I'm only at the beginning of this journey and so the more I work with them, the more techniques I'll discover and yeah, it's interesting to see how my work will develop.
this little hut was actually in the photo. I adapted it slightly um, to suit my landscape, but it wasn't a house. It was like a little um, sort of barn hut thing in the middle of the field. But I really loved being able to add a little building to this landscape. actually that off camera I knocked back the colour in a couple of the fields with an eraser. I have this eraser called a magic eraser and I find it really good actually. I'll try and feature it in an upcoming video so you can see it. Um, it's really good because it rubs out pen and also if I've accidentally um, splattered some paint elsewhere on a painting if you're working on paper you can kind of rub it out and yeah it's been a bit of a lifesaver actually but I'll show you that another time um, yeah the big brown field in the center at the top there um, and the rusty colored orangey field to the right I went over both of them with the eraser so they ended up with quite a nice effect because it just took it back a little bit, took back some of the heaviness. seem to turn pieces around on their side like this. Sometimes I just find it easier depending upon the angle I'm kind of drawing at at the time. Because I was going at a diagonal angle here it was just a bit easier to turn the sketchbook. It looks a bit weird on camera though. <laughs> One thing I wanted to talk to you about actually was my new art club that I've recently set up. It's only been running for about a month, but we already have quite a few members. And um, yeah, it's growing each week, which is really nice. And they seem to be a really nice bunch of people as well. Um, yeah, what can I tell you about it? If you haven't heard about it um, before, it's on Ko-fi. I decided to host it on there. I was on Patreon for a while. I think I talked about this in another video recently, actually. Um, but decided to move to Kofi. Um, and yeah, so it's £3 per month. Or you can choose to just donate for one month and you can gain access to all of the content for 30 days after your donation. So whether you want to become a monthly subscriber or whether you want to just dip in and out and give the occasional donation to access all of the content, you can do that. I'm sharing special videos that I've recorded for the art club members. I share my inspirations, we do a bit more art materials, chat. They're able to suggest um, ideas for videos, what they'd like to see, um, what they'd like me to kind of test out and show them, different techniques and so on. Um, yeah, it's really been so nice so far. I mean, as I say, we're only a month in, but I'm really enjoying it and I have so many ideas for different things I want to do and different videos and posts and so on. Um, yeah, if you want to find out more about it, just I'll leave a link in the description below. Just go and have a look. Um, there's more description on the actual page of what you can expect to see each month. But it'd be lovely if you really enjoy my videos to see you over there. and and get to know you a bit better and you can learn a little bit more about my process. Um, I'll be sharing more sort of behind the scenes stuff that I don't share on YouTube or on my public Instagram. Um, so yeah, please go and check it out if it sounds like something you would be interested in. I 
also wanted to tell you a little bit about um, the videos I've got coming up on my YouTube channel. I have a couple in progress at the moment. One is a Jackson's Art Hall. Again, I have some more new materials to show you and to swatch and test out. And the other one is something that's been in progress for a little while. It's a choosing, keeping, um, sort of like a mini art haul. I bought a few things from them back in August now. Um, I think it was August. Yeah, beginning of August. So it's a good couple of months ago. And um, I have, I'm sort of halfway through filming the video. So I need to finish that and get that up because I think that will be another interesting one for you. You can see those new materials and see me using them and talking about them a little bit. Um, very interesting paints in that one. So yeah, I've got some, some other videos coming up soon and it's just a case of finding the time to finish filming and editing them. So we're nearly at the end of this drawing now, but one thing I want to confess to, well, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably already know this because I did share this finished piece um, the other day, but I have actually changed it. So if you watch to the end of the video, I'll be able to show you how it's changed slightly from stage it's at here and I'll just add that little photo at the end and you can see what I did to the brown field. So this is how it looked at the end of the drawing session and I was quite pleased with it. I thought this kind of looks how I wanted it to look. Um, it wasn't until I posted it on Instagram as it looks here. Um, people really liked it, it got a great response so I've actually left that post up on my account. Um, but I also posted the new version because when I looked at it on Instagram it struck me how heavy that brown field looks and I just felt it was too dominant in the overall drawing. So what I did is I got a white Posca pen, a paint pen, and I just drew lines through the field, kind of like a ploughed field. And for me, it just looks so much better now. I think the balance is better. And it just goes to show that a small change can make such a big difference to a piece of artwork. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you all for watching. And yeah, I'll see you again next time.